Welcome. I'm Bill Wake. This is my weekly summary of what we've been doing on Twitch. Lately, we've been working in assembly language on a programming language I call Tenth. We're creating the compiler and interpreter for them. This last week, we really focused on the compiler aspect. So there's a colon routine. It defines a secondary. There's a semicolon routine that ends it. We made eval all call the compiler for regular words that need to get compiled. Then compile adds the words to the secondary as it should. And then boom, we have a primitive compiler. So with that, we can create new secondaries, call secondaries, call primaries, however we want to do it. We don't have a lot of primaries yet, but we'll work on that. And then finally, we ended the week by making eval handle numeric constants. So if you just type uh, a number into the REPL, it pushes it onto the data stack. We don't have that compiling yet. And I'll give a brief demo at the end. So there are a couple concepts you need. One is the notion of regular and meta words. So regular words like plus, times, divide, duplicate, swap, they all are just simple primitives you just run when you're in run mode. Meta words, um, colon, semicolon, if, while, repeat, they're all words that have to run in compile mode or regular mode, or run mode rather. So uh, they they need extra control, basically. And so I mentioned run mode, compile mode. So the deal is if you're in run mode or if it's a meta word, then you run the word. So meta words always run. Otherwise you're in compile mode and you just compile the word. It's not a meta word, those don't get compiled. And so the effect of this is colon creates a new word. It put, creates the header for it and switches to compile mode. So normally you start in run mode. Semicolon creates the footer of the secondary and switches back to run mode. Meta words always just run, and other words write to the secondary when they're in compile mode. Well, the big deal we did was the compiler is creating this secondary, so we'll go into a little detail on that. Um, the focus there, I see colon name, call, 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 semicolon. Um, that's the way a definition looks. So that defines the word name, and it consists of three calls. So we have all these pieces we have to store. We um, actually started implementing with semicolon. And semicolon, it really just adds in that end, uh, that call to end secondary, the method that handles um, how do you return from one of these secondaries. It also flips back to run mode. Okay, and then the next one is we implemented um, putting in the name of the routine into the secondary space and creating the header, which has a link to the previous dictionary entry. It has the address of the name we just created, and it has the address of the start secondary code that will actually run this. And finally, the addresses of other primaries and secondaries, uh, those, those words like call, uh, turn into those addresses, uh, pointing to the word address of any primary or secondary. All right, so the the whole co we're basically going to look at the whole compiler, or almost all of it. Colon is the starting point, and uh, it's got several steps. We did test them all, so um, we've got some some confidence. There's not a lot of looping, so it's it's not complicated code. Uh, well, what do you do first? First thing is you pull up the name. So it's colon followed by a name. Well, colon needs to define that word. So it's going to need to read that word and, and you know, start saving stuff about it. So first thing it does in 87, 88, it copies that word into the secondary space. Um, that way we have it access to it in the dictionary header. Um, then we got to adjust the secondary space boundary because the way uh, the ARM64, when you're pulling in an 8-byte quad word entity, you need to uh, be aligned on a 64-bit boundary or 8-byte boundary, however you want to look at it. So we have um, we get the length of the string and we do a little adjustment to make sure that uh, the characters get some padding after them. Even though it's a null terminated string, we still have to put in padding to make it align correctly. In 96 and 97, we're retaining a pointer to the word that we created up there in 87, so the, the name of the function, because we'll need that for the header. All right, and then uh, we move move the secondary space by the adjustment, and then line 99, we're going to fill in the first word 
in our header that's a pointer to the previous dictionary entry. So this is just a linked list. We need to, to add a, an item to the list. You, you set the new node's pointer to the old start of the dictionary, and then you adjust the start of the dictionary to point to the new node. So that's what's happening there in 101. And then we want to do the second one. Well, the second word in our header is the, um, is the name that we just created. And we kept that in X1 just for this purpose. We store it at offset plus eight. Yeah, that's the second word. And then in 106, we've got the pointer to the start 2D, which is our start secondary method. And we store that in the third header thing, since all secondaries call start secondary to run themselves. At this point, secondary space still points back um, before the first header, so we move it forward 24 bytes, three words, and uh, it is now past the header. So the next thing going in, we'll have somewhere to, to write. And we change to compile mode, so future words get put in the secondary list. Eval all has to make sure the compiler gets called correctly. So the compile method gets called when we're not in run mode, we are in compile mode, and we're not a meta word. So meta words never get compiled, they always evaluate. Um, but if you're just a plain old word and we're in compile mode, we're going to pass that into the compile routine over in line 88 there. And when we finish, we rejoin the main flow of eval all. Okay, and here's the compiler. It's kind of two pieces. I guess the first is 117. We look in the dictionary and say, you've told me to put this word in your routine. Does it exist? If it doesn't exist, we call that code in pink. And basically that just writes out something like uh, word not found and then your word. If it is found, then it's a good word. And dictionary search returns us a pointer to the word address, which is the uh, the pointer to the code that should run, or a, a link to the code, I guess, really. And so it'll store that pointer into the current secondary space entry and move that pointer forward by eight so that uh, you're ready to write the next thing in secondary space. And the final part of the compiler is semicolon. Its, it's focus is to get us out of compile mode, and it's got two steps. The first is you need to load address of N2D, so we get the word address for that, the link to that code, and we store it in our secondary space and bump the counter forward so the next secondary can come in, and we change back to run mode. So we're done compiling this word. The next word will execute directly, whether it's a meta word or a regular word. It was a great feeling to get this compiler basically in place. And all right, let's do a demo. First thing, let's do a make. We're using make files for this. Uh, you can see this is our output from unit testing. So all of these are routines for test routines for different uh, components of the system. And you can see we have a fair bit of tests for what we have. Now let's run the REPL, read eval print loop. What we did today was make this work. So uh, if I push 17 in run mode, that goes onto the stack. We don't have it working in compile mode yet, but that'll come next week. That does a word I can add. Uh, three to this top of the stack. If I add, the stack should be 20. All right, that's fine. I can also define a method, colon and space. A double it method. Okay, and double it is duplicate what's on the stack and add it. Will give us two times it. Space and then semicolon. It's easy to omit that space, but you don't want to. Um, we still have the stack printing after each word it runs. We'll, we'll get rid of that at some point next week. We're going to define a print word that you explicitly call. All right, but at this point, we have 20 on top of the stack. If I call double it, that method will execute dupe add. Okay, so 20 on the stack, duplicate, and add should give us 40. Uh, you know, there, there are only a handful of operators we have right now. We just have, I think, add, multiply, just a few words, a handful of words, maybe eight or 10. With our compiler in place, our focus next week is making it more complete. So right now we can run and put in a constant, but the compiler can't handle it yet. It doesn't know how to write that to a secondary because it doesn't just write the number. It has to, it has to do a couple little steps to do it. So we'll work on that first thing next week. And then our focus is really just add primitives. We, we only have a few right now. There's just not much there. So we're going to focus on all those areas, arithmetic, logical operators, relational operators, stack control, input output, control statements like if and while, 
and maybe strings and arrays. We haven't defined even how those will work, but uh, if we get these others done, we'll probably have that chance. So I'm looking forward to next week. At the end of the week, I think we'll have a small language you could use to do little small applications. So it's, it's getting there. Once we have strings and arrays, I think you have a pretty complete setup at that point. And uh, we'll switch gears and we'll go up a level now and uh, develop a unit testing framework and an application in our new programming language just to prove out that that we can do what we want and see what we're missing and go from there. If you'd like to join us, we meet every day, Monday through Thursday, 2 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 6 to 8.30 p.m. UTC. If you come to xp123.com slash Twitch, it'll take you to the live sessions. Or you can go to xp123.com slash YouTube, get to the old sessions, time delayed and lightly edited. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.